Okay, for this uh, for this video, I'm going to do a quick run through of how to set up a camera in Unreal 4 and uh, uh, animate it um, and render it to file. Um, this is the Sci-Fi Hallway. It's uh, free on the marketplace. It's from the Quixel uh, people, and uh, our little uh, subject is a. Uh, uh, a creature from the uh, uh, Mixamo uh, animation uh, suite, which is also free on the uh, marketplace. All right, so uh, the first thing I did uh, in the scene was shut off all my post processing. I don't like uh, rendering with uh, post processing. I, in most cases, I actually even prefer to get rid of these particles um, and just have a you know a clean environment uh, to do the. Uh, um, post-processing composite um, all the stuff in there but we're not at that part yet um, in the pipeline so I'm just gonna leave them in um, for now um, and for this particular uh, test it, it doesn't actually hurt um, I uh, did a quick run through of, uh, of this earlier and um, this was kind of the end result that I'm going for you can see that I've changed the the color and all that kind of stuff quite a bit and try to give it a much more cinematic type uh, feel to it. Um, so uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I like to do is uh, create a matinee and uh, normally I would work with the, the matinee in my uh, second monitor but uh, for the sake of uh, getting all this uh, recorded uh, let's uh, just go ahead and uh, split this over uh second side of the screen uh hid all the details down here so we have a little bit more uh room to work through this is going to be a 10 second uh uh animation so just uh sell all that to 10 uh, one of the uh one of the ways to add a camera and currently it's my preferred way um, so I like to create the camera from here. It uh, creates it from uh, the viewport. Uh, so wherever your uh, point of view happens to be is where the camera will be created. And as you can see, it's uh, sharing the same point of view. Uh, let's set up the camera for this animation. I'm using a 2.4 aspect ratio, which is a really wide um, uh, H, uh, well, 4K uh, format, and I'll just kind of uh, tighten the shot up a little bit because I don't like the uh, ultra wide uh, uh, 90 degree, uh, more game centric type of uh, field of view that the uh, default camera has. So um, let's do that and bring your timeline back to zero select the uh, the keyframe that it gives you um, uh, when you first create the camera um, and when you have that keyframe selected it says uh, down here that um, we are currently in a uh, normally I'd call it auto key but it's like a modify current key um, type mode so that if I move the camera, rotate the camera, it's automatically recording that keyframe, uh, updates to that keyframe. But if I, you know, slide over here, make a, a move, it's not going to create a keyframe until I actually go to the add key. Um, I kind of wish there was an auto key uh, mode. I don't know if there is one or if there isn't one uh, for sure. But uh, currently I don't know where it is if it's there. So let's go to the... Uh, the end of the timeline. We'll kind of rotate back, kind of move the camera up a little bit, and focus it on this window. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, make sure our movement selected and add a key. So if I just play it back right now, you can see that we have, you know, it's smooth. Uh, doesn't really track the character in the window that we're looking for. 
um, quite well enough. So we'll add um, a keyframe to uh, the center of the uh, animation at the five second mark here. Let's add a key. And while that keyframe is active, we'll go ahead and just point it towards uh, the center of the uh, of the little uh, office here. A uh, little counter. See, so it tracks that a lot better. But uh, let's say that we don't particularly love the. Uh, um, field of view, you know, because we can't really see the character, granted the reflection actors in the way. Um, we'd probably hide those if we wanted to, but it's not really that uh, important at the moment. Um, but uh, we know as, you know, as we're panning uh, past this uh, little room that we're going to want to kind of zoom in and see uh, the uh, creature inside. So we're going to select our field of view. Um, going to add a key. Uh, move over. Uh, add another key. And our camera in our camera controls our field of views down here. And let's just kind of zoom in. And so as we pass by, it zooms in, and let's just say before the end of the shot, we're going to want to zoom back out. So See when it gets to the center of the shot here, it kind of the the whole motion slows down. Um, that's because when you create a keyframe um, from this part of the uh, um, uh, when you have movement selected, it creates a keyframe on every motion channel. And um, we don't want a keyframe on every motion channel. We just want the keyframes on the channels that. Um, we're interested in. But before we do that, I want to add a little bit of like a handheld, slightly handheld kind of look. So we're just going to rotate, you know, the camera kind of randomly a little bit, drop a keyframe down, move forward a little bit, do the same thing. The reason why we do it in this order as opposed to doing it afterwards is because I've found that uh, the uh, the results have a tendency to get a little bit confused if you start breaking the uh, uh, keyframe um, channels up uh, ahead of time. I don't know why that is. Uh, I tried to do this tutorial run through before and I did it the other way and my camera started rotating 180 degrees. Which is weird because it's usually really hard to get the Unreal camera to do that. Um, it likes to take the shortest path as opposed to the path that you give. So if you you know, want to do like a 360 degree uh, camera pan rotation, um, it uh, you have to do it like every 90 degrees or every 45 degrees. Um, another thing I'll note, I like to have my um, rotation and uh, grid snap off when I'm doing the camera. Right now we are at um, snapping, but when I actually go to access the handles um, of the camera, I, I turn that off just so it's a little bit smoother. Um, so let's play it back again. As you can see, there's going to be a lot of kind of slowdowns, you know, speeding up as it's, you know, going through those keyframes, um, which we don't want, and we will get rid of. Um, you know, 
let's just add a few more wiggles in here before we can go ahead and do that though. Change the grid snap to a bit less. Uh, for sake of keyframes, I do like to have the grid snap on. Um, I think it's just... Um, it just makes it easier in the Unreal. Um, so, you know, in most 3D software, you're, you're going to lock to a frame. Unreal doesn't deal with frames, it deals with time. Um, so, um, it just kind of you know, gives you like fixed points of reference. Um, okay, so let's uh, uh, split translation and rotation. And uh, if I wasn't really tired, I would have uh, said that correctly. And let's just individually select all these uh, transition points and delete them. Uh, let's on the center one, let's get rid of the Z, but let's keep the, um, you know, let's get rid of the Y too, let's just keep the X for now. And let's play back, check our results. So you can see the playthrough is a lot smoother. Um, and if we wanted to spend the time, um, we could access the, uh, the curves editor and go in and individually adjust all our curves. Um, that uh, it's kind of more than this shot needs, uh, so I'm not going to really worry about that. Um, I think uh, setting up your curves ahead of time would probably help with the kind of easy ease um, or auto ease in, ease out uh, thing that uh, the mo that's uh, causing us problems in the motion um, translation uh, uh, channels. But uh, just by doing those keyframes, because um, they're not needed, first of all, um, I think it solves uh, most of the problems that we're going to have. But um, if, in case you're wondering, there's a full uh, curves editor, and, you know, it's pretty decent. Um, but uh, from here, now that, you know, we're as happy as we need to be currently for our uh, camera path, um, let's go ahead and set that up to uh, um, actually uh, play when the level is played. So. Uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up a uh, director group. Uh, this is important because when you go to render it needs to know when to pick up your individual camera because you can have multiple cameras in a scene it needs to know which one. Um, and so even though I kind of feel that this is a unnecessary step just for rendering a single shot uh, maybe you know you'll want to set up a lot of cameras and um, in that scenario um, you're going to want to set up all your cuts um, from camera to camera um, uh, here so make sure the director track is selected add key and you see now it gives you this drop down you can uh, select director group uh, for some reason um, I don't know what you would want to key there, but you do want to have your cam selected, and you're just going to hit OK. And so here it kind of gives you, you know, uh, for how long during this time period that, you know, you're going to be on this camera. If you had another camera, obviously, it will kind of chop that up into uh, subgroups, but we're only dealing with one camera right now, and so that's all we need. And if I were to launch the game, you would expect at this point that uh, it would uh, uh, play the animation because you're telling it to select that camera um, but that's not what's going to happen so if I just hit play and uh, it, before you hit play it wants you to close the matinee um, 
it actually brings you back to the player start, which I currently have outside the level because it has a tendency to show up as a untextured sphere. Um, but um, um, but what you need to do is you need to go into uh, your level blueprint and you want to go open level blueprints and here and this is uh, the one I set up for my previous animation uh, it's kind of a running experiment um, it doesn't need to be this complicated but what I'm trying to do is set up a um, um, a blueprint that gives me an exact fixed time uh, for how long in frames that the shot is going to be. Um, so it's 10 seconds long, 10 times I worked in 24, it's going to be 240 frames. Um, but uh, just so you know how to build it from scratch, uh, the recommended way is to uh, we want a uh, begin play and it's an event so event begin play um, and I actually think this might be redundant with the other method although you might have noticed that it was actually plugged into the beginning um, I think I'm gonna try uh, removing this and see if it still works but from begin play we want to and you have to have your matinee actor selected um, and we want to right click type in play bring up play and this is your selected matinee actor and it's basically just going to play a selected uh, target is matinee actor um, and for the most part that's all you need um, I do like to enter cinematic mode that's the wrong one we want this is it, yes, okay and we're going to want to turn on cinematic mode and I already made this variable um, cinematic mode's on, what you can do um, uh, kind of drag that out, promote to variable um, and it, there should be a rule that it can't automatically create it underneath another node uh, we're going to give this variable a name. We're just going to call it cinematic mode. Um, enter. And the reason why we check that first is so its default um, state is that it's on. Um, and this is, you know this is actually a little bit more, you really just need to go to cinematic mode, and what cinematic mode does is like hide certain things um, in the level um, it can, you know, like lock movement lock turning so that you know, if the mouse is active and you have like a, a player character in, in the frame of a shot um, it's not really relevant, you know, in p terms of like uh, uh, an offline render state because you're not going to have actual players running around inside your animation. Um, you could, but um, you know, generally speaking, what's moving is stuff that you set in motion, and you're not going to be uh, necessarily puppeteering something inside um, a predetermined shot. Uh, you could puppeteer. Um, I know Henson Studios has been playing around with you know real-time stuff. I think they have a uh, a TV show out. Um, I've never seen it, but uh, I, I do believe that they do some, you know, kind of real-time puppeteering of CG characters, uh, which is very interesting. Um, um, however, if we were just to leave this 
in this current state, when we render our shot, it won't stop. It'll just keep rendering it until you manually type in the command to stop the shot. And of course, that means that you have a variable shot length at the end of your shot. So what we're going to do and execute console command and uh, if we were to just plug this in here and say um, console command is actually going to be exit um, if we were just to link this into here you would start up the playback and it would just shut down automatically we don't want that so we're going to add a delay in between the two and because we know we have a tech 10 second shot we're going to put the duration in here 10 and that will mean that after 10 seconds that it automatically closes down but I've noticed that it's not always exactly so you know there's like a certain amount of execute time that happens here so um, what I like to do is I like to actually add a branch and what a branch is is it's a boolean operation it's it's basically checking if something uh, is true or false and so um, after this delay let's just break that right now um, we are going to want to set um, our cinematic mode so here cinematic mode is turned uh, on here it's going to be turned off uh, by not checking that and then from there branch and then we go false into here and of course you need that as the condition so basically this is controlling this um, and the way we tell it to actually do it on a check on a per frame basis as opposed to just when it picks up is that we're going to set a tick event tick and the version that you saw uh, when I first opened this up kinda had these playing together um, but I'm assuming that because this is a tick that it doesn't actually need this and so let's just disconnect this and run the experiment because uh, I haven't actually had a chance to check this yet and since this tutorial is pretty much just for my friends um, a little bit of experimentation is okay so we're going to compile this and then we're going to hit um, we're actually going to hit um, the play button over here but you can hit it here but I want to hit this one so that I can uh, check the uh, 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 the playback on the uh, on the nodes themselves because I don't think it actually de uh, debugs it um, from here so let's just kind of move this over here and hit play and it worked that's what I thought and so you can see the uh, the thing pumping into here you can see the timer countdown as soon as the timing changed it uh, snapped off Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, I think um, let me just get rid of that. Um, now, from what I understand, because ticks are happening on every frame, that they can be expensive. So if you're doing something in real time, depending on what it's checking, 
uh, you want to use event ticks uh, sparingly, but because we're doing an offline render, um, you know, we're not worrying about how many milliseconds a frame takes a render. We're worrying more on, you know, keeping it, you know, faster than offline rendering, and that's what we care about most. Uh, so just recompile that so that node is gone. Um, and we can close that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into Matinee. So let's open up our Matinee. And from here, we're going to go to click on Movie. And I already put my custom um, resolution in. I've already put my custom frames per second. It defaults to 30. Um, I've done tests, you know, I've rendered stuff at 60 frames. I've rendered stuff at, you know, variable different frame, you know, different types of frame rates. And uh, that has a very big impact on what the shot looks like. Uh, when The Hobbit came out and they were rendering at 48 frames per second, I found it very hard to watch because it felt like I was watching, you know, something from, like, you know, the video, you know, 90s, you know, soap opera type of thing where it's just, you know, uh, it looked bad to me. Um, the rest of the movie I thought was fun, but um, the, the higher frame rates, to me, I don't like. It's a stylistic choice. Um, it looks very gamey um, if you render um, at, you know, 30 or 60 frames per second. Um, if you're looking for that more cinematic feel, 24 is where it's at, in my opinion. Um, and um, I hope that, you know, anyone watching this would agree with that statement. Um, but you can change the frame rate if you're looking for something, like I said, if you're looking for something more cinematic, I would stick with 24. Um, and uh, once you have everything set up, you just hit OK. It saves what you're doing, and it will bring up a separate window. And you'll notice when it pops up that everything looks really washed out. And the reason for that, I believe, and I don't know this because I never looked it up, but it, it's looking washed out because it's it's showing the entire bit depth, um, like an ungraded um, uh, footage off of uh, like a digital film camera um, or even a d DSLR when you shoot in RAW. That's what it is. Um, I don't think it has a negative impact on the resulting frame because the resulting frame looks normal. Um, so I find it odd that it does this. But uh, as you can see, rendered pretty quick. And it puts the uh, file in your users directory in your pro projects uh, folder so um, I'm not going to show you my directories but um, I'm going to my documents uh, Unreal Projects and this particular level is called the uh, Sci-Fi Hallway because it's named um, after the uh, the content folder. Uh, auto name that by uh, the engine, and then you want to go into Saved and Video Captures, and it's um, it's going to be auto named to the name of your uh, level, so it's going to be called Main Map. And it's going to be matinee, and the name of the matinee actor. Um, so if you're doing shots, you're going to want to name your matinee actor the name of your shot. Um, and it gives you the frame rate information um, and the resolution. And the and there's a underscore zero at the end of this one is because it's the first one uh, named after this matinee actor. If I were to render several it would put a, a 1, then a 2, and a 3, and a 4, etc. You know, uh, in, in that number's place. And if I just open it up and play it, 
Um, it's playing back kind of chunkily, um, and I believe it's because it's uh, um, uncompressed, because it's uh, 1.55 gigabytes for this 10 uh, seconds. So it's uh, playing back uncompressed off my uh, regular storage drive and not my RAID drive. So it's a 2K plate. And uh, I believe uh, someone just uh, messaged me on Facebook. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll cut the video here. Um, and then I'll do a follow-up one. Um, um, want to do the post-processing in After Effects.